Hi everyone, Gundavax here for a 40 second and brand new episode of our special edition Lore of the Universal Century. Today we're going back again to the early UC 90s and attempt to answer a particular question, which is... In this video we are going to try to determine which one of these mobile suits is the best. Of course, I am aware that the notion of better is something to manipulate with caution. So, in order to make a strictly unpersonal decision, we are going to evaluate both models, partially, and with an objective eye. This means we are basing the evaluation on five different criteria, which will be used to determine both machines' capacities on different aspects. But let's start by the beginning. We will now introduce both machines properly. The Geradoga, codenamed AMS-119, was a general-purpose mobile suit introduced in the early UC-90s, fielded by newborn Neo Zeon to serve as their main scene model. Manufactured by the Granada factory of Anime Electronics as a special commission for Neo Zeon, the Geradoga was a suit designed as a real return to sources to the concept of mobile infantry. Once pioneered by the venerable Zakutu, an idea which had been sadly put to the backstage during the technological boom of the Grips era. Indeed, far away from the overcomplicated and ultra-specialized designs on sprites by Axis Zion, the Titans and the Ayuk, the Geradoga was more or less conceptualized as a suit expanding basic human functions, willingly forfeiting higher performance and special abilities to instead focus on being reliable and adaptable keeping itself relevant by being able to fulfill more specialized rules through optional equipment and easy to create variants. Now, this did not mean that the Geradoga, like the Jim or the Zakutu, was a mere grunt primarily meant to fill the ranks, with its simple yet admirable design being the result of a careful examination of numerous past Neo Zeon models. Indeed, the Gera was a suit with no clear development tree, being the synthesis between not one or two but four different parent suits, namely the Zaku Tree Late Type, a simpler form of the Zaku Tree, the Gutsa, said to be a cheaper dead copy of the Bolino Oksama, the Doga, a close range specialist with ties with the Galus series, and finally the Marasai, was designed also by the Granada factory. Through these ties with such diverse suits, the Gera Doga was able to gain respectable abilities in all fields of mobile suit warfare, including long and close range combat, electronic warfare, stealth, cruising range, and of course, versatility. As a result, the Gera Doga proved to be a very interesting design concept, far less dangerous and impressive than any 4th generation mobile suit on a model to model scale, but a very satisfactory trade-off on a large deployment scale, although considered a bit outdated by UC-93. From UC90 and onward, Anime Electronics would manufacture near 100 Gera Dogas, with 82 regular models alongside 10 commander units, filling the ranks of newborn Neo Zeon as of UC93 as the second Neo Zeon war started, with a large panel of variants being produced in parallel. Although Anime would quickly shut down the production by UC94, numerous Gera Dogas and even more variants would continue their life in the hands of various Zion remnants, while Anaheim would continue using it as a reference for decades to come for its future seals addressed to anti-federation groups. On the other hand, we have the AMX-116 nicknamed Zaku-4, a brand new machine recently introduced in the Manga Moon Gundam. A high-performance heavy mobile suit, the Zaku-4 was created as a new entry to the Zaku lineage, succeeding the infamous Zaku-3 and aiming to officially be the spiritual successor to the mythical Zaku 2. A suit conceptualized following the defeat of the Zaku 3 in front of the Dovan Wolf to become Axis Zion mainstay mobile suit, the Zaku 4, like the Gera Doga, aimed to be a return to the sources of the Zaku series and its versatility. But unlike the Gera, which advocated for a total return to the idea of mobile infantry, instead refused to give up the achievements of the Zaku 3. 
Indeed, the Zaku 4's design was marked by this profound respect to the Zaku 3, felt as an integral part of the Zaku family, retaining its heavy and high heel frame armoring, numerous weapons and high capacity generator alongside its infamous steel unit, thus keeping the ability to mount different equipments for localized conflicts. Now, despite this closer design to the Zaku 3, the Zaku 4 was also something that aimed to follow in the footsteps of its ancestors the Zaku 1 and Zaku 2, being redesigned to put an accent less on high personal performance but rather emphasize balance, while keeping itself highly adaptable and being comfortable to pilot for a large panel of soldiers. As a result, the Zaku 4 would prove to be a remarkable mass production model, capable of filling the roles on assignments usually requiring different mobile suit models, while proving itself adaptable enough to even serve as a guard unit, a honor usually reserved to close-range mobile suits. By late 1989, the Zaku 4 would start its eventual production, although it is unclear if the model was initiated by Axis Zion in its last days of existence or by the Krangle faction would be, by UC-92, the sole faction to still possess this remarkable but far from officially recognized successor to the Zaku line, especially with the existence of the Gira Doga, the mainstay mobile suit of their rivals, Nubo Neo Zion. With Moon Gundam unconcluded, it is unclear what eventually became the Krangle faction in the long run, although it is highly certain that the extremist cell that opposed Shah Aznabo, sorry, Kazvan Rem Daikun, would eventually collapse, with its remnants possibly bending the knee to new born Neo Zion. The Zaku 4, their own proposal to continue the Zaku line, would eventually disappear from records, far away from the notoriety of the Gera Doga. Now that you know the contenders, let's move to the examination. Now it is time to examine both machines and determine which was the best mass production model out of the two. Our first criteria is about their stats, so their technical specifications, which should mirror their own paper performance. First, about their height. The Geradoga is 20 meters tall against the larger Zaku 4, towering at 26.3 meters. The HUC taught us that the smaller a mobile suit is, the less likely it is to be shot down by an enemy attack. So with this in mind, the Geradoga's shorter height play in its favor. In terms of weight, we have a similar situation. The Geradoga, weighing 50.8 metric tons, is lighter than the Zaku 4, which weighs 75.3 metric tons, and is thus more agile as a result. Another point for our boy the Geradoga. When it comes to generator output, things start to however change, with the Gera, with its 2160 kilowatts of generator output, lagging behind the Zaku 4 and its more powerful variant rating at 3400 kilowatts of output. In terms of max acceleration, the Gera Doga is able to reach the 1.06G, and while the Zaku 4G record is detailed nowhere, multiple Japanese sources have made the comparison between the Zaku 4 and 3, and estimated that based on plausible thrust and weight, the Zaku 4 max acceleration should technically be near the 2Gs at least, in all cases far higher than the Gera Doga. Armoring-wise, the Geradoga also struggled to compete with the Zaku 4, with its titanium alloy and ceramic composite being less durable and resistant than the Gundarium composite alloy featured in the much bulkier Zaku 4. So, of the 5 stats we examined, the Gera only have 2 of them in its favor, so despite a close match, the Zaku 4 seems to be better than the Geradoga, at least on paper. Now, we are going to compare the Gera Doga and the Zaku 4 with their frame versatility being used as a criteria. But what is exactly this frame versatility? To make things simple, the frame versatility is the capacity for a mobile suit design to be modified in order to spawn variants. The more variants a mobile suit has, the better is its frame versatility. However, let us remind that the number of variants is not enough to define the versatility of a frame. For a frame to be highly effective, it must allow the development of variants specialized in different types of warfare, but also variants meant to correctly work in certain hazardous environments. For a mobile suit to be considered a successful mass production model, it must be not only effective on the field, but also economically affordable. 
Mobile suits like the Isaac, which frame can be adapted for various environments, as seen with the Aqua Isaac, Isaac D, and for specialized purposes, as seen with the Isaac Cannon, Isaac Custom, or Ewok Zack, are considered amongst the best mass production units, as the frame makes their manufacturer save a lot of money on efforts. But let's look the Gira Doga and the Zaku 4 frames instead. As a spiritual successor to the Vanilla Zaku 2, a suit renowned for its extremely high frame versatility and also being linked directly to the Marasai, a suit with an overabundance of variants, one could assume the Gira Doga to be a paramount of frame versatility. And this time, one would be absolutely correct. Despite being widely renowned for its high adaptability as it is, the Gira Doga is seemingly a suit with an exponentially effective frame, which can be tasked with very specialized duties in all fields of warfare, with very few modifications of parts applied to the design. By adding a large backpack equipped with a Lange Bruno gun and two large fuel tanks, the Geradoga transitions toward the famous Geradoga heavy arm type, gaining the ability to serve as a high firepower sniper or fire support model. By adding a different long range head antenna, an officer version, the Geradoga commander type, can be obtained, while a swap of the titanium armoring to a gundelum armoring over the same very own movable frame enabled the creation of the suit known as the Gera Doga Kai. A light armor version reaching the 80% of the original weight called the Gera Doga Marine Corps version can also be obtained, while a Ewok variant, the Gera Doga Force Reconnaissance type, has also been adapted to be capable of electronic warfare. As seen in Double Fake, the Gera Doga can easily spawn close-range mobile suits, with the Quell Doga, a suit reintroducing heat weaponry for deadly close-range engagements, proving to be a highly effective machine. Even better, the Gera Doga also seems to accommodate decently the Psychomu system, with four different new type use variations, the Rota Doga, Doga Double Fake version, Bagui Doga, and Gera Doga Psychomu system test type, coexisting as different attempts preceding the Yakdoga very own existence with various degrees of success. Finally, the frame of the Geradoga also seems to be revertible to 4th generation standards with the Veltro Doga, an ASUS area dominant mobile suit combining high fire power, road thrust and high mobility being compacted into a single design. As a bonus, the Gera Doga also seems to be rather recyclable, with the Panzer Doga continuing the miserable prolonged existence of the Zaku tank series, through it being attached to leftover tank parts. In terms of environmental adaptation, the Gera Doga is also state of the art thanks to its frame, with variants ready to roam all environments. To land combat specialized versions, the Gera Doga G and the Gera Doga EV armored land type have seen the light of the day while a variant capable of desertic warfare, the Desert Doga, also being around. An amphibious variant, created through data recycled from the Dzogok, called the Marine Doga, is also a thing, while a variant capable of self-sustained atmospheric flight, the Sturm Doga, was also produced, thanks to the amazing frame of the Gera Doga. Finally, to close the Gera Doga praising, the Ria Doga, formerly known as the Seed Ember Custom, a bastard machine between Doga and Jiga normal type, and capable of equipping a large quantity of different packages from other mobile suit designs, also confirmed that the Gera Doga is characterized by a wonderful frame, and something that shouldn't even remotely put to question. On the other side, sadly, the Zaku 4 is simply incapable of competing. As I stated earlier, the Zaku 4 was, yes, designed partially as something capable of filling different roles on its own, and capable of dealing with localized issues through its different tail equipments. But as we know, optional equipments have their limitations, and I seriously doubt the Zaku 4 to be able to withstand desertic warfare, amphibious environments, or even achieve self-sustained atmospheric flight without any modifications outside the tail, because you know, even the Zaku 3 had to spawn some of them, despite the tail. On its own, the Zaku 4 has only spawned a single variant, the Commander version, which introduces a special tail equipment, the Princess Unit. With its additional thrusters, fuel tanks, and six very unique missiles equipped funnels, the Princess Unit is somewhat able to transform the Zaku 4 into Ezra New Tapius variant, a high mobility unit, or both of them at the same time, which is very interesting 
and seems to hint a very good frame. Hell, with the Jiganu sacks, I would even accept that a Zaku 4 with the Princess unit is its own close range variant, because that would be right. Unfortunately, even in the unlikely case the Zaku 4 was still able to mount all the tail equipment of the Zaku 3, it wouldn't be nearly enough to compete with the Gera Doga and its 18 mentioned possible variations. This time, the point go to the Gera Doga. Time for our third evaluation. Now we are considering the inbuilt arsenal of both mobile suits. But let's explain what does it mean first. Inbuilt weapons are essentially all the weapons a mobile suit possess, which are not handled, but directly integrated in the mobile suit frame. For some mobile suits, they are mounted in the head, as seen with the RX-78 2 60mm Vulcan guns, but it is also very common for other mobile suits, especially artillery units like the Zaku cannon, to have the weapon fixed on their shoulders or on their arms. By definition, you can't really disarm a mobile suit of its inbuilt weapons. Of course, you can disable or destroy them, but you get the point, these inbuilt weapons are going to be the last things which will allow a mobile suit to continue combat after both its arms are chopped off and the main weapon is lost. As you can easily understand, having inbuilt weapons is vital for a decent mobile suit, and most importantly, for a mass production model, since rookies tend to be disarmed pretty easily. So, let's compare the Gera Dogas and the Zaku Force inbuilt arsenal, shall we? As a mobile suit following the Zaku type design doctrine, the Gera Doga retains the two traditional Zaku's inbuilt assets, aka the spiked pauldron and the shoulder shield. The spiked pauldron is essentially just a set of spikes over the left shoulder, enabling the Gera's pilot to be able to still fight in close range combat even without its arms, using the pauldron to charge and ram the enemy. Meanwhile, the shoulder shield provides relative cover from the right side, being able to tank volleys of ballistic projectiles or being destroyed in the place of the wall suit should a beam attack being blocked by it. Unlike the conventional shoulder shields, the one used by the Gera Doga introduces also a set of pointy sections, which can be used as a makeover spiked pauldron, providing more penetrating force upon impact as a sort of armor cracker, but transmitting less kinetic energy due to the non-spherical shape. Although one could say that the Doga was designed with better shoulder equipment than both Zaku types, possessing two different shoulder offensive weapons, it also seems that this was made because the Doga's real spiked pauldron was twisted to provide more protection than offense, as well as accommodate verniers and more dynamical shapes. What I'm trying to say is that the spikes on the Gera Doga shield are more likely the real offensive inbuilt weapon, with the left pauldron being less about being a spiked pauldron, but more something helping the Gera Doga being a more mobile suit, something in line with the second generation doctrine. Aside this, the Doga also equips a two tubes composite inbuilt launcher, capable of firing grenades or smoke bombs. Despite how versatile this weapon is, my grip is that it is mounted on the Gera Doga's optional shield, which means the loss of the shield equate to the loss of the launcher, and the loss of the shield usually happens before the loss of the handled main weapon, the very reason why we are considering inbuilt weapons in the first place. On the other side, the Zaku 4, also a member of the Zaku line, of course introduces the spiked pauldron and shoulder shield, with the spiked pauldron being more in line with the more spherical design used since the Zaku 2 while the shoulder shield provides protection for no less than more than half of the Zaku 4 side, much better than the Doga's tiny shield. With such shield, it is likely that the Zaku 4 can tank several beam attacks rather easily, proving itself as the suit with better inbuilt weaponry. Even worse for the Gera Doga, the Zaku 4 discards the mouth beam cannon of the Zaku 3, instead mounting a pair of similar beam cannons in the head. These cannons can fire 1.6 MW beams, almost beam rifle rated in terms of output, but with the thin penetration of a beam gun. With these weapons alone, the Zaku 4 gains an absurd advantage in terms of inbuilt weapons, much better than anything the Doga has. Combine that with the better shield and pauldron, well, the Zaku 4 wins in terms of inbuilt weapons. Now, let's talk about both suits' tactical use. The tactical use of a mobile suit is basically the way in which this mobile suit can fit in the grand scheme of things, 
and how can it impact the global strategy of the entire army. In short terms, we are considering these mobile suits with the eyes of not any neo zion officer, but its supreme leader, akin to the position coveted by both Kasval Vrim Daikun and Luz Krangel, who would want to see which of these two models would be the best asset for the reformed neo zion forces. The tactical use of the Gera on the Zaku 4 is actually almost identical, being both general purpose mass production grunt units designed to serve as spiritual successors to the Zaku 2, with the Doga advocating for a return to reliability and simplicity, while the Zaku 4 favorizes a multi purpose unit approach. In all cases, your position as supreme leader of the second coming of Neo Zion makes you aware of one tiny issue that plagues your faction since the defeat after the first Neo Zion War, and is crucial to consider for the tactical usability of Ezra's suits. Surely, like Kasval Rendaikum, or assuming your nobility like Luz, you are going to be filthy rich economically, which means you have large monetary resources to allocate to your cause. On the other hand, unlike Axis Zion, what you lack is a centralized seat with defensive positions, with your forces being more of a ragtag group of well-equipped insurgent cells than a fully-fledged seceding government. For this sort of nomadic force striking from the shadow to bide the time, the Zaku 4 could seem like a very good choice, being extremely multi-purpose and filling well a large panels of roads with the simple swap of tail units enabling it to cover more localized needs. Problem, your lack of centralized power seats mean that you cruelly lack manufacturing infrastructure, which means that factories and assembling lines under your control are few and of crucial importance, something you would prefer using to create game-changing new type use machines rather than your mainstay series of models. As such, the Zaku 4 is quickly problematic. Not only it is a suit of neo zion manufacturing, which means adopting it will result in your small industrial complex having to fully dedicate itself to its production, but the fact it is essentially a 4th generation suit, so rather complex and hungry in terms of parts and supplies, will dig a hole in your reconstruction efforts. The risk is that despite your will, the few factories will not keep up with the demand, and you will end up with the Zaku 4 failing to become the mainstay suit, with a portion of your forces getting it, only to get crippling supply problems. Yeah, perhaps not the best trade. On the other hand, the Geradoga is a suit manufactured by Anaim Electronics, a mega corporation with a powerful industrial empire scattered across the moon, owning various R&D sites as well as a certain amount of factories. This means that choosing the Gera Doga makes it possible to adopt on a large scale reliably, as each unit you get is something you can have if you simply pour enough money, and each spur part you need is something you only have to pay for, but which you are sure to eventually get. If, like we said before, you are filthy rich, this can be a good use of your economic might, since by outsourcing the development to Anaheim, they will be the one to handle the whole industrial production, thus enabling you to get your new mainstay suits without having to produce them with your scarce industrial resources. Of course, becoming subservient to a mega corporation is far from being an optimal choice, as you become dependent on the sales and can easily be blackmailed should Anaheim decide to squeeze you to the bone. But with enough monetary resources and enough political maneuvering and leverage, outsourcing the production to Anaheim is something that can solve your main issue, and rebuild your forces decently and with a fair amount of standardization and conformity. In terms of tactical usability, the Geradoga again tramples the Zaku 4. Now we are basing our fifth and last evaluation using a less down-to-earth criteria, but something nonetheless vital in the universal century. I'm obviously talking about the soft power of the machine, and which, between Doga and Zaku 4, is the more effective at it. By soft power, we intend the psychologic impact and reception of suits can have on the different factions in UC, especially the one they are targeted for in contrast to the other 5 criteria, which are essentially hard power. For example, monohide or Zaku-type mobile suits are by tradition Zion mobile suits, and as such, will be more welcomed by any Zion-related factions, which equate to excellent soft power, if the target of said mobile suits are Zion pilots. In contrast, mobile suits with Gundam-type features 
will be widely praised by Federation-related factions, and in contrast, shunned by Zeons due to the legend of the White Devil. Now, let's dig the Zaku 4 and Gerald Doga's soft power. The Zaku 4 is the direct albeit a bit unofficial successor to the Zaku family, with its own name, Zaku 4, placing it in direct continuation to the Zaku 3 and 2. As such, the Zaku 4 is a suit with a fair amount of soft power through its name only, sounding like a direct continuation to the Zaku series, the first mobile suit, and the one that carried Zion most important victories in the days of the One Year War. Zaku is a bit the symbol of Zion as a whole, and to choose the Zaku 4 as a mainstay is more or less to place a claim to ancient Zion glories, something enough to make the young Zeke's dream. Aside that, the Zaku 4 is also a suit fairly similar to the Zaku 3, which means that across the pool of soldiers you are going to get, a fair amount will be veterans from the first Neo Zion War, some of which once piloted Zaku 3s are now going to really appreciate the familiar design of the Zaku 4. With the Zaku 4, you can make your youngest gullible recruit dream, and at the same time, please some of your veterans from Axis. Sadly, this similarity to the Zaku 3 also plays in the disfavor of the Zaku 4, notably when observed from the lens of the general populace. The Zaku 3 was a symbol of Axis Zion, a first Neo Zion uprising that unfortunately failed. As such, the Zaku 4 can be seen as an unwanted throwback to Axis Zion, at best, an idea of failure, at worst, remind people of the oppression and faults of Aman Khan's regime, which, by the end, is still fresh to anyone by UC-90. On the other side, the Gera Doga also serves on the Zaku descent and aesthetics, with simple and streamlined looks unmistakably derived from the mythical Zaku 2, a second coming of the machine that carried the dreams of Zion of the Old something that the young recruits will surely look with bright eyes. This return to sources will also not only motivate the youngsters, but boost the confidence of the few veterans from the One Year War you still have, while probably pleasing the Axis survivors you also have at your side. Yes, this is not a Zaku 3, but there will be surely people among them who won't choose federal default Zaku types, such as captured Isaacs and Marasai, and will gladly welcome this new return to the Zaku traditional shapes, this time not twisted by federal interference. Even better, the Geradoga also feels like something new. Sure, it reminds of the Zaku, but it doesn't feel like a Zaku 3.0. It is a throwback to older designs while also being its own thing. This idea is something you want to convey into your new Neo Zion movement, both for your forces and for your propaganda aimed at the general public. No, you're not another dog of the Zabi family nor Axis Zion oppressive regime. Your newborn Neo Zion, the true heralds of space noid independence. Your mainstay suits embody this new departure. Having Geradogas in your colony is being freed by Neo Zion, not being yet again occupied by Aman Khan cronies, or even worse, leaving another coming of the oppressive titans under Isaac. In the end, soft power wise, the Geradoga also proves largely superior to the Zaku 4. Now, let's move to our conclusion. As we have seen earlier, the Zaku 4 has superior on paper performance and has proved to have better inbuilt weapons than the Gera Doga, so three criteria in its favor. The Gera, on the other hand, has proved to have a more versatile frame than the Zaku 4, better tactical usability, and of course, a much more adequate soft power, which means it has three of the five criteria in its favor. So, we can conclude that the Gera Doga is a better mass production mobile suit than the Zaku 4. And with this, we conclude our video. Tell me in the comments which VS you would want to see in the future. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you didn't already. Without losing any time, let's end this video. But who will survive?